So today we are going to discuss agriculture. See, agriculture has been a way of life in India. It is only after the industrial revolution that agriculture emerged as an economic activity. And since then, the pattern of agriculture and the pace of agriculture has got expedited to an extent that it is causing ecological degeneration. As a result of which, now there is a new orientation in agriculture and we are returning back to organic farming. Now in India, if you see agriculture, agriculture still accounts for 48% of the total workforce, total workforce of the country. It accounts for 48% of the total workforce and more so 90% of the unorganized labor. 90% of the unorganized labor. What do you mean by unorganized labor? That is those people who don't have any social security. 90% of the unorganized labor are deployed in agriculture. That is why we say in agriculture we are having disguised unemployment. Basically, despite this fact, agriculture accounts for just 14% of GDP. Despite this, agriculture accounts for just 14% of GDP and 10% of the total export earnings of the country. See, despite this fact, agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. Do you know why? See, in India, 75% of the manufactured commodities are domestically consumed. They are domestically consumed. It is not the direct contribution of agriculture to GDP that is more important. Rather, we say, when agriculture grows by 4% per annum, then only the Indian economy can grow at a sustained rate of 10% per annum. Why? If agriculture contributes just 14% of GDP, then how can it be said that if agriculture grows at 4% per annum, then only the Indian economy can sustain to grow at 10%? Because the mass scale of the people that are deployed in agriculture, their earnings increase. Their earnings increase when the agriculture grows at a 4% per annum. And as a result of this, basically when their earnings increase, their consumption also increases. After the revolution, the forward and backward linkages of agriculture and industry has got strengthened. Because of green revolution, as the production increased, various flour mills, sugar mill, rice mill. That is, this is the forward link of agriculture with industry. Those industries got the basically impetus. Moreover, with the growth of agriculture, industry is manufacturing fertilizer, pesticide, mechanic, these basically are these uh, tractors, threshers, basically they also got the impetus. As a result of this forward and backward linkage, the industrial sector also got the boost. And ultimately, when the earnings of the agriculture sector increase, the 48% of the labor force, their purchasing power increases. And they start purchasing the various consumer durables required for a some living and when they purchase the consumer durables the entire economy get the impetus it is not the direct contribution of agriculture that is so important but indirect contribution of the number of people engaged in agriculture and the increase in the earnings they propel the indian economy now what we see that basically in agriculture in why india is so important india is one of the few large countries where 44% of the geographical area of the country is arable. That is which can be put to cultivation. In China it's just 13%. In India 44% of the area is arable that can be put to cultivation. As a result of this large area, basically India, India has huge potential to increase its production. India has huge potential to increase its production. In India, the only factor that is hindering the growth of agriculture is low yield. That is low yield. 
Why is it that in India we are having low yield? India is having the largest area under wheat in the world, largest area under rice in the world, largest area under sugar cane in the world, largest area under pulses in the world, largest area under tobacco in the world, largest area in cotton in the world. Despite that fact, India is not the largest producer of any of these crops. Why? Why the yield of agriculture is low? I will discuss the intricate issues affecting the yield of Indian agriculture. Right? Before that, I would like to discuss certain basic terminologies and concepts in agriculture. For example, basically, first of all, in India's agriculture, 69% of the total land area is arable land is devoted to food crops and 31% of the arable land is devoted to cash crops. Right? Cash crops, that is food crops and cash crops. We usually divide the crops into these two categories. Or cash crops are also known as non-food crops, non-food grains. Now, before discussing the intricate aspects of the agriculture, I must tell you certain basic concepts and terms. Now, what are those basic concepts and terms? What is cropping pattern? What is cropping pattern? What is agriculture density? What is arithmetic density? What is physiological density? What is rain fed agriculture? What is dry zone agriculture? Isn't it? Basically, Apart from this, uh, certain other facts like basically what is agriculture intensity? What is agriculture intensity? What is agriculture efficiency and agriculture productivity? Isn't it? These are the basic terms and concepts which are used in agriculture. And ultimately, uh, before beginning with the agriculture proper topic, I will tell you why the yield in India, why the yield is low. So basically, basically our objective here is to discuss the various crops and the climatic conditions required for their growth. But before that, we are discussing certain basic aspects about agriculture. Now, what is cropping pattern? What is cropping pattern? Are you getting this? Cropping pattern refers to proportion of land devoted to different crops at a given point of time at a given place. Cropping pattern refers to the proportion of land devoted to different crops. For example, this is rice. This is wheat, this is jowar, this is bajar. Suppose rice accounts for 30% of land, wheat 20%, this 15%, uh, bajar 10%. At any given place, at a given point of time, the proportion of land devoted to different crops refers to the cropping pattern of that region. Cropping pattern is a dynamic concept. It varies with space and time. At different places, different proportion of land is devoted to different crops. And with the passage of time, this cropping pattern also undergoes change. Basically, various agroclimatic political factors also affect the cropping pattern. For example, if the minimum support, of, support price of any crop is increased, the acreage under that crop will undergo increase. This is called cropping pattern. And what is crop combination regions? In any region, in any region, basically number of crops are grown. In any region, whichever crop occupies the largest area is known as first standing crop. The crop that occupies second largest area is known as second ranking crop. And the crop that occupies third largest area is known as third ranking crops. These three crops are known as dominant crops of a region. Maybe number of other crops may also be grown. But the top three crops which occupy the 
largest, second largest and third largest area are known as dominant crops of that region. Now, cropping pattern and crop combination, these two are slightly different. Cropping pattern refers to the proportion of land devoted to different crops at a given point of time. Now, within one agricultural year, suppose the first crop is rice, second crop is wheat, third crop is jowar. Suppose the first crop along with rice, some other crops are grown, second crop, basically maybe the area under wheat may undergo increase. All the crops that are entering into combination within one agriculture year, they constitute crop combination. Are you getting this? See, cropping pattern and crop combination are two different things. Cropping pattern at a given point of time, at a given place, what all proportion is being, what all proportion of land is being occupied by different crops. Over the period of year, first you harvest rice, then you harvest wheat, then you harvest pulses. Crop combination means what all different crops, one after the other, basically what all different crops are being cultivated in any area in a given agriculture year. That is, suppose in any area, rice is the first striking crop. That is known as rice region. In India, we have 15 crop zones. In every crop zone, a particular crop occupies the largest area. Now, in rice zone, in certain areas, after rice, the crop that occupies the second largest area, that will be grown. Then again, within the same agriculture region, third crop will be grown. So, crop combination region is what all different crops are entering into combination after cultivation of rice, maybe along with rice or after the rice. Crop combination means whether along with the rice or after the rice. Once the rice has been harvested, what all different crops are being grown in any region in one agriculture year that constitute the crop combination region. Now, certain basic aspect if you see the net zone area, the net zone area of the country is 141 million hectare. If you see gross crop area, gross crop area of the country is 196 million hectare. Do you know the difference between these two? Simple. If a farmer is having a hundred hectares of land, in this hundred hectares of land, if he grows only rice crop in one agricultural year, he grows rice crop and he does not grow any other crop in that year. In that case, his net soil area is also hundred hectare and the gross crop area is also hundred hectare. But if after harvesting rice, he sows the next crop of wheat on the entire hundred hectare in the same agricultural year, then the net zone area will remain hundred hectare, but the gross crop area will become two hundred hectare. Are you getting this? In the same land, if he harvests first crop and he also goes for second crop, even if he goes for third crop also in the entire area, then the gross crop area will be three hundred hectare. That means increasing the gross crop area increases the agricultural intensity. It increases the agricultural intensity. What is agricultural intensity? Agricultural intensity. Gross crop area, net soil area in 200. If you are going for multiple crops in a one year, then the gross crop area will be more and the agriculture intensity will be more. But in India, the agriculture intensity is constrained by the availability of water. You can go for multiple crops in a single season, in a single year, only if the availability of water is there. In India, out of this 141 million hectare, it is only 65 million hectare where the irrigation facilities are available. Irrigation facilities are available. 76 million hectare depends upon rain. That is 56% of the grass crop area is dependent on rain. When you don't have assured supply of water, 
you cannot go for the second crop. Are you getting this? Going for the second crop or third crop, it requires availability of water. In India, it is the lack of availability of water. Even 50% of the land area, less than 50% of the land area is having irrigation facility, and more than 50% of the crop area is dependent on rain. Therefore, I said rain-fed agriculture, dry zone agriculture. Actually, there are three types of agriculture. First, where the irrigation facilities are available, that is irrigated agriculture. Those areas where the irrigation facilities are absent and the agriculture is dependent on rain. Those areas are of two types, where the agriculture is dependent on rain and irrigation facilities are absent. These areas are of two types. Dry zone agriculture and rain fed agriculture. Those areas where the rainfall is more than rainfall is more than 75 centimeters, those areas are known as rain fed agriculture. And where the rainfall is less than 75 centimeters, those areas the agriculture is known as dry zone agriculture. Are you all getting this? But in both these areas, the facility of irrigation are absent. Facility of irrigation are absent. Basically, that means this is one of the factor that is hindering the yield of Indian agriculture. Without irrigation, you cannot achieve irrigation. You cannot go for high yielding varieties. And when you can't go for short short maturing, early maturing, high yielding varieties. You cannot go for multiple cropping. Are you getting it? Although the growing season is long, but still, if you have early maturing, high yielding varieties, then you, you can go for multiple crops, number of crops in the same year. But when the irrigation is absent, that itself limits the number of crops that can be raised in a particular year. Now, the third aspect that is what is agriculture density, what is arithmetic density and what is psychological density. Arithmetic density means total population of area upon total land area. That means the normal density is known as arithmetic density. Normal density of population in any country, take the total population of that country, take the total land area of the country, you get what? Arithmetic density. Psychological, physiological, physiological density, that is total population of any area divided by total arable land. Total population divided by total arable land. This constitutes psychological, so sorry, physiological density. Physiological density means total population of any area divided by total arable land. Total arable land. Agriculture density means total population of farmers divided by total arable land. This is called agricultural density. Now, I will discuss the interrelationship between agriculture intensity, efficiency, productivity and this will explain you why the yield of agriculture in India is low. Clear? Have you all taken down this? Now see, I told you in India, what is agriculture intensity? Agriculture intensity basically means gross crop area divided by net zone area. That is the land that is put to cultivation more than once in a particular year. The land that is put to cultivation more than once in one agriculture year, that will determine the agricultural intensity. 
But lab is having the highest intensity. Basically, if you see agriculture intensity, Now, if in any area agriculture intensity is high, that means what? That means from the same patch of land, number of crops are being raised in one agricultural year. This means gross crop area is high. Gross crop area is high means what? Basically, the same patch of land is being devoted to number of crops one after the other in one agricultural year. If agriculture intensity is high, the efficiency of the efficiency of use of factors of production is also high or not. That is the same patch of land is being it, it, will, it, it is being cultivated number of times in particular year. That means agriculture efficiency is also high. The factors of production, the water, land, basically fertilizer, all are being put to maximum use. Now if agriculture intensity is high, suppose you raise one crop of rice, then you raise one crop of wheat, then you raise one crop of pulses. That means from the same patch of land, total production is more or not. Agriculture productivity is high or not. Agriculture productivity is what? Total agricultural output per unit labor, per unit land and per unit capital employed. Agriculture productivity is what? Land productivity, labor productivity and capital productivity. If you are raising multiple crops from the same land, the total production from the same patch of land in one agriculture year will be more, land productivity will be more, automatically the labor productivity will also be more, labor will get employment throughout the year and the capital productivity, that is the capital employed, capital employed, that will also be high because certain capitals are not to be deployed again and again. The residual fertilizer also plays its role. The residual pesticides also plays its role, isn't it? So, if you are raising multiple crops from the same land, it will increase the agriculture intensity, it will increase the agriculture efficiency, it will increase the agriculture productivity. Why in India it is not high? Why? Why in India agriculture intensity, agriculture efficiency and agriculture productivity is low? And these are the factors that determine that yield of agriculture in India is poor. Take down. First, small size of farms. This is because of increased population. The same patch of land gets divided among the children. Small size of farms does not enable mechanization. Does not enable mechanization. And without mechanization, you cannot expedite the pre-harvesting and post-harvesting operations. Kartna, Bona, basically these are pre-harvesting and post-harvesting operations. And if you take too much time in pre-harvesting and post-harvesting operation, then automatically you are left with little time to go for next crop. Are you getting this? First. The facilities of irrigation are limited. Facilities of irrigation are limited. Farmer is handicapped. He cannot go for next crop because of want of water. Secondly, it is a poverty. Even if facilities are available, he cannot go for tubal irrigation for want of credit. For want of Credit delivery system in agriculture is one of the poorest in the world. Credit delivery system in India for agriculture sector is one of the poorest in the world and that is the pathetic state of affairs. That shows the pathetic state of affairs. Limited irrigation in poverty, he cannot go for high yielding varieties. If he cannot go for high yielding varieties, high yielding varieties, early maturing high yielding varieties, he cannot go for multiple cropping. It is because of lack of monetary, uh, monetary impetus and lack of irrigation. Both act, act as a handicap. One, the high-risk varieties for different agroclimatic zones have not been developed. And even if they are developed, the farmer is not in a condition to apply those. Because of 
lack of irrigation and lack of credit. It is a poor state. He cannot apply the pesticide, costly pesticide, because high yielding varieties are highly prone to pest attack. He cannot use fertilizer because irrigation is not available. Irrigation is not available. So even if all these are there, poor. Basically, in India, value addition in agriculture is totally lacking. There is a tendency among the farmers and traders to sell off the agriculture produce in the raw form. The same potatoes are sold to Uncle Chips and the same Uncle Chips sells it at 100, 100 times more money. The same mangoes are sold and the mango pulp is extracted and the same pulp is sold, sold, sold back to India at 100% more benefit. Same wheat and flour, huge difference in the cost. You purchase wheat, very cheap. You purchase flour, very costly. We lack value addition in agriculture. We lack value addition. Value addition will have two effect. One, it will increase the financial status of farmer and secondly, value addition will boost agro-based industries that will lead to disposal of, that will lead to basically uh, these farmers who are engaged in agriculture, they will get additional avenues of employment in agro-based industries. Twin benefit, export earnings of the country will increase. Are you getting this? Uncle Chips very prominent. In my place, Parukhabad, right now, 3 rupees kg potato is going on, nobody is purchasing. 300 rupees, you can have 100 kgs of potato right now. In Delhi, I don't know what the cost of potato. In Farkhabad, the India's belt for potato production. 3 rupees kg potato. And basically, anybody can purchase it. Here in Delhi, I think it is 25 to 30 kg. It is a distance of 200 kilometers. See the chain. This is why. Because of lack of marketing and storage capacity. Potato, basically, we don't have adequate cold storage and dry storage. 30% of the food production get destroyed because of lack of adequate storage capacity. Basically, adequate marketing facilities are not there. The same people are selling off potatoes right now at 3 rupees per kg. The same potatoes are costing 25 to 30 rupees kg in Delhi. Distance of 200 km. It is the flaw on the government side that there is lack of storage marketing and transport all facilities are there but people cannot avail it a poor farmer cannot afford to transport his potatoes to delhi he is hand to mouth as soon as the harvest is there he wants money he cannot wait for it government has created certain institutions that he can deposit the deposit the crops in a warehouse he will get a chip but still these are lagging they are not widespread national agriculture insurance scheme first of all the farmers are not availing even if they are availing, what protection do they get? In case of failure, they get reimbursement. What if, in case of glut, if production is high, market value declines, and the farmers commit suicides? Because National Agriculture Insurance Scheme does not provide you protection in case of surplus production and the falling of market prices. These factors have innovatively hinder the growth of Indian agriculture and Indian agriculture as a result of this has never emerged as a lucrative profession. By choice, people don't go to agriculture like in European countries. It is a lucrative profession in India it has not emerged. Why? Because of these factors. Because of these factors, the yield is low. Are you getting it? Why the yield is low? Next time the farmer loses the incentive of producing more because it was because of blood that he lost the prices. Excess surplus production, this lack of transportation and storage capacity. Basically, if the transportation potato, India can emerge world's largest big manufacturer of alcoholic drinks from potatoes. Basically from potatoes, basically alcohol is manufactured, alcohol can be manufactured by any commodity. India is having bulk. People transport potatoes from UP to Maharashtra, cold storage, because of lack of storage capacity. And ultimately, they never go to take back their potato. Why? Because the cost of maintaining the potatoes in cold storage, it exceeds the market price of potatoes. I am taking a single example. You can generalize it. Are you getting it? In India, these all factors have cumulatively hindered the yield. First, certain are infrastructure factors. Certain are institutional factors. These factors can broadly be divided into infrastructure and institutional factors. 
स्मॉल साइज ऑफ होल्डिंग लैक ऑफ मेकेनाइजेशन लैक ऑफ प्री हार्वेस्टिंग टू हार्वेस्टिंग ऑपरेशन लैक ऑफ मल्टीपल प्रॉपर्टी इवन इफ फार्म्स आर लार्ज बेसिकली इवन इफ यू आर हैविंग फार्म्स बट इरीगेशन फैसिलिटी इज नॉट वेरी एंड अब ऑल इरीगेशन फैसिलिटी विल हिंडर देन बेसिकली हाईलिंग वेराइटीज आर नॉट बी डेवलप फॉर दैट रीजन हाईलिंग वेराइटीज आर नॉट हैव नॉट बी डेवलप फॉर ऑल द क्रॉप्स एंड नॉट फॉर ऑल द एग्रो क्लाइमेटिक रीजन्स even if they are there lack of value addition they get the same crude prices and even if that transport marketing and storage capacity is not there which cause them significant so these all are the factors that have constrained the growth of indian agriculture and hindered the agriculture to emerge as a lucrative profession so now onwards we will discuss the different crops which are grown in india what are the climatic conditions required for them what are the regions where they are grown and what is the india standing in world right so now we are starting this topic agriculture